Welcome, this is Spear Crisis with another tutorial on Blender 2.6. Today we're going to be working with Blender 2.66. Blender is a freely available 3D modeling program that can be downloaded at blender.org. Download it, check it out, and hopefully these tutorials will help you out. Today we're going to be working with the Ocean Simulator, the Ocean Modifier, whatever you want to call it. This is a good example of what you can or can't or can do better than uh, in Blender uh, with the Ocean Simulator Modifier thingy. Uh, this took about three days to render uh, with a 2008 Mac Pro. Really old computer, isn't it? Really, really old. I'm going to cry after I make this tutorial. But anyway, let's just go ahead and get started here and delete the default queue because it's useless by pressing X and clicking Delete. Add a new object by pressing Shift A, Mesh Plane. Go to the Modifiers tab on the right-hand side of the screen by clicking the wrench. Click that. Click Add Modifier and then click Ocean. Ocean, I say. Click that. You'll notice our little baby plane is now a big fat plane. It's a big whale. It's amazing. Why? Why is it so big? The reason why is because if you look over here at the right hand side of the screen, it says geometry generate, and it literally does what it says. It takes the plane, it generates a useful plane out of the plane you have created uh, for this ocean simulation. So you don't have to actually, you know, subdivide and do all this stuff to make sure that your plane is useful. Blender does all the work for you. But let's say you want to create like Suzanne the Monkey Oceanized, which is pretty amazing. I tried it out when I was uh, researching for this. You'd create a Suzanne the Monkey, you'd go over to Geometry and change it to Displace, and then it will actually use the geometry in which you added originally. So as you can see, our regular plane is now being used. It's a little tilted because it's only using the four vertices that are available to bend and conform to the ocean. Hmm, yes. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go back to the generate settings and start learning. You know, things. So, uh, what does repeat X and repeat Y do, did, did, have done? Uh, X literally means on the X axis, Y means on the Y axis, so if I change it to 2, zoom out, you'll see that it repeated it again. Repeat it on the Y, same deal. Uh, so that's really all it does. And it literally does create a duplication of the original. So you can see this wave is diagonal, this wave's diagonal. It's the same thing. Uh, so if you want to fake a big scene, I guess that would be the way to do it. Let's so go ahead and change it back to 1 and start learning some more of these options here. So resolution is set to 7. Let's change it to 15. And you'll notice that it's kind of subdividing, subdividing the plane and creating more detail. Uh, so it makes your ocean simulation more pretty. Uh, size literally sizes out the simula uh, simulation. Uh, so let's change it back to one. Spatial size is the size of the domain. Uh, so much like the, uh, the water simulation, whatever it's fluid simulation, you have a domain for it. Uh, you may need to adjust it as you increase the size. I've never tried it, never messed with those settings, so figure it out yourself. That's right. A tutorial that tells you to figure it out yourself. Isn't that so useful? Uh, depth. Uh, depth really doesn't do anything, so never mind. Random seed literally randomizes things, uh, so pretty cool. Uh, choppiness is actually the sharpness of the wave, so as it peaks, does it get sharper or does it not? So if I set it to zero, uh, right there, it's flat and you know smooth. Uh, and then if I set it to 4, you can see it's a lot more choppy. It's a lot more shapely, I suppose. Uh, so, I like to set it to anywhere between 3, 2 and 3. Uh, sometimes 4. Sometimes 5, if it existed. I mean, I'm sure you could probably tell. Let's see if it's 5. It works. 5 works. Let's see, 10. Yeah, that's horrible. That's just terrible. Let's change it to 3. 3 is a really good number. 4 is actually amazing, but I'm going to set it to 3 because I like average tutorials. Uh, scale is literally the size of the uh, the waves, as you can see. Bigger, 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 bigger. Oh, God. It's like marshmallows or something in a microwave. Beautiful and tasty. Uh, the scale, I set anywhere between 1 and uh, 1.5. 1.3 is what I'm going to leave it at because that's what I left off on. Uh, resolution, yet again, uh, the, the settings that I use on that is uh, for demoing, uh, meaning working in Blender with it. 15 for rendering, I do anywhere between 20 and 30. The most I've ever done really and truly is 25. Uh, but I'm sure you can go beyond that with better machines. So, that gives you a good idea of all the settings besides time and alignment. Uh, and of course, bake. 
uh, if you're unfamiliar with that. So let's start with time. Uh, on our timeline here, we're set to zero, and as you can see, if we move across it, nothing happens. The reason why is because we haven't animated our scene yet, and how you do that is by setting the time. So time is set to one second. Let's uh, keyframe that by putting our cursor over it and pressing I on the keyboard, and that keyframes it to time one. Uh, but how do we set, how do we know, uh, more importantly, how long our animation will be? Because obviously we need to keyframe it at 250. So let's go ahead and select 250 because we'll need to have it there later. Go to the render tab over here, and you'll notice that we have a start frame of 1, an end frame of 250, and a frame rate of 24 frames per second. So how do you find out how many frames equals how many seconds? You take 24 frames per second, divide it into 250, you get about 10.4, and that's how many seconds you have, so 10.4 seconds. So let's go back to the modifiers tab, change the time from 1 to 10. Uh, zoom out, oops, wrong zoom out here, zoom out right there. Uh, we're already set to 250 down here, so all we have to do is put our cursor over time, press I, it turns yellow, which means it's keyframed, and as we scroll across the timeline, you'll notice that the ocean is a motion. Pretty cool stuff. Now, what does alignment do? Alignment has everything to do with uh, the animation. Uh, so the higher you set alignment, the more aligned the waves are. So if you set it to 10, which is the uh, scrolling maximum, I'm sure you can type in an, a higher number if you wanted to, uh, but basically you create a shore scene where all the waves are rolling into the shore. Really awesome. Uh, of course, the lower you set that setting, uh, the more random the waves are. So if you have a deep ocean scene, you want it set to closer to zero where the waves are really random. So <clears throat> really and truly that covers everything besides bake. So bake ocean literally is quite possibly the worst thing I ever did and possibly you will ever have done. Oh yeah, science. Uh, so let's look at why. So here's a final render that was supposed to be a final render but it ended up being horrible whenever I was working on this tutorial. So this is a render I did. It's like, oh man, this looks amazing. So let's go ahead and render it overnight. So I, I set it to render. I fell asleep and I woke up in the morning and it ended up doing this. Uh, now you, you may think, wow, the, the foam grew. That's good, right? No, no, it's horrible because that's not what I wanted. I didn't want the foam to grow. I wanted the foam to stay the same except for move as the waves move. Uh, so for some reason, by baking, it does that. Uh, you know, like I said, you may want that. I definitely don't. Uh, I mean, I ended up framing, uh, rendering up to 78 frames, and it keeps growing and growing. I'm sure if I kept letting it render, it would turn all foam, which would have been horrible. Instead of creating a render like this, that turned out really well, and, uh, and the animation that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. So let's go ahead and go back. Uh, oops, wrong screen. There we go. So I don't bake. Uh, yes, I did change the cache path, and it really doesn't do anything for me. So let's go ahead and adjust the sky uh, sky settings and start finalizing this tutorial here. So let's go to the right-hand side of the screen, click the world, which I've already done right there. Uh, we are in Blender Render, so we need to change that and go to Blender Cycles. Uh, so go to the top center of the screen, click Blender Render, and go to Cycles Render. And let's go ahead and click Use Nodes. Uh, you are still in the World tab, by the way. Click Use Nodes. Uh, change color to this little button over here. Click that. If you click this, it's just going to click color. So click the little button right of the color and click Sky Texture. Uh, to see what this means, what we want to do is go to the bottom left-hand side of the screen, uh, click the little sphere that looks like uh, it's white and shaded, and change it to Rendered. You'll notice that you still can't really see anything uh, because there's not you know, any contrast, so let's go ahead and zoom in and see what this does, this little weird ball. So if I click it and move my cursor, it actually changes the time of day. This is supposed to be simulating the sun. So I'm going to set it somewhere around there so I've got a little contrast, and you'll start to see a little bit more detail popping out over here, there's a little wave showing there. Looks good, but I still don't see much detail. So let's go ahead and texture our wave. So opposed to actually going to the right hand side of the screen and going to the materials tab, what I want to do is actually go to the top left hand side of the screen, click default, and change it to compositing. Compositing, my son. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. And you'll learn things by doing it. So let's go ahead and move around in this little 3D view here and frame our scene before we set it to rendered. 
Let's see here, alt shift left click, alt left click to rotate, and I think my scene will look good about right there. So let's go ahead and zoom into the bottom right hand side of the screen, change it from shaded to rendered, and now we're on our way to learning good stuff. So the so the plane's selected, uh, so what we want to do in this window here, the nodes window, is click use nodes, and then click the little material tab, and that will control the materials. Since we don't have a material already created, let's click new, and it automatically sets it to diffuse. So just like whenever we're over here on the materials tab, clicking that, and you see diffuse, this is the same thing except for more complicated. And I love complicated things. So I'm going to put this back on the uh, modifiers tab, uh, just for purposes unknown. And uh, let's delete this diffuse here by left clicking it and pressing X. Add a new node by pressing Shift A, Shader, and Glossy. And drag this little thing here to over there. And you'll notice that we have a lot more detail. So at this point, if you were to render an animation, uh, it would look something like this. Let's get out of this. And load this. And bam. And there we go. Play. So that's what it would look like uh, at this point if you just did that. And of course, this is a lot more rough than uh, what we're currently working with. But this gives you an idea of what it would look like if you were just to give up on this tutorial at this point. Uh, you're like, ah, I quit. He taught me what I need to know. So that would be a good idea, a good reference of what it would look like. Let's make the the ocean a little bit darker. As you can see, it's a little, it's reflective, and it's reflecting the light so much that it's actually making the surface surface look lighter than it should. Uh, so let's go ahead and add another node uh, by duplicating this one. So left click the the node, the glossy node, and press Shift D to duplicate. Move your cursor down and left click to finalize that and then uh, change the color to something dark. I'm going to change it to a dark green. And then I'm going to add a mix shader so we can actually mix these together. So Shift A, Shader, Mix Shader. Move it so that it, the line turns orange and it automatically displaces the line to the new node. And there we go. And as you can see, the, the texture of the ocean is a lot darker now and that's exactly what I want and of course you can mess with that further like changing this blue let's go ahead and change it to blue and make more of like an aqua green or an aqua blue or whatever it's called <clears throat> and uh, yeah looks pretty nice so uh, foam what about it how do we get foam to work uh, this will be the last part of the tutorial uh, and the most complicated uh, how do we get foam to show? So if you uh, look over to the modifiers tab, click generate foam, nothing happens. If we change uh, the name of our foam to something creative like foam, um, took me a while to think that up to be honest with you, uh, nothing happens. So how do we get foam to show? Uh, how you want to do that is actually press shift A and go to input and go to attribute. All right, and the name, of course, is foam. So the the name of the foam, the attribute is foam. Uh, so that's how it knows uh, what it's looking for. Let's go and connect the dots here, fa uh, factor to this, and you'll notice that the dark green is now the foam. So with that observation, you realize that the bottom node in the mix shader is the foam color. Uh, so oh, how would you go about doing that? Well, to change the color of the foam, you simply just change this bottom node here to white. So let's go ahead and change it, and the foam is now white. But what if you want more detail? So let's go ahead and change it back to green, and there we go. And let's go ahead and disconnect the factor, the foam. Let's go ahead and make it a darker green here. There we go, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new mixer, shift A input, uh, shader rather, uh, and mix shader. And go ahead and mix these two together. And add another color. So let's go ahead and reorganize everything here. There we go. Shift A, 
uh, shader diffuse and connect that there and now we have a separate white and at this point we can add a brightness and contrast by pressing shift a shader uh, not shader color brightness and contrast connect that to the diffuse and simply increase the brightness and it increases the brightness of your foam so that's pretty much it as far as foam goes um, you know if you want to make it more detailed there's a lot more other things that you can end up adding to it but I don't think I'm really gonna go into that unless people uh, request it uh, so hopefully this covers everything you uh, wanted to know um, uh, like I said if you want to do the bubble uh, simulation which I don't know if I've got that on my desktop still I've got a lot of things scattered everywhere but this is the type of results you could see uh, from what you've learned thus far uh, like I said uh, you have to basically mess around with the foam settings a little bit more but I think that's pretty clear uh, how to do uh, just by adjusting uh, for example if we go into blender here you can adjust the coverage uh, so if you want more foam you in uh, increase that number uh, or you can decrease it by pressing zero I wonder if you can put a negative can you put in a negative that would be interesting you can put in a negative I never tried that uh, so you can actually put in negative numbers uh, if you want to uh, use a displacement map uh, for your um, for your foam uh, you actually can drag this and put it to displacement and it will add a extra level of dimension to your foam um, I wonder if it's color because it doesn't seem to be obvious let's see here because I know I did it a different way but I'm pretty sure that's that's gonna work I just can't really tell by this particular render if it doesn't end up working, just let me know, and I'll I'll uh, tell you another way of doing it. But uh, it's just a little bit too long to get into, and I don't want this tutorial to keep dragging on and on and on. Uh, if you want to make your foam reflective, you would actually change it from uh, diffuse to glossy. So let's go ahead and do that. Do that. Delete diffuse. Shift A. Input. Uh, no shader. Glossy. Drag that in between these two put that there put that there and now it is glossy uh, so it actually has a level of reflection uh, to the light which uh, isn't obvious but uh, it you know whenever you compare them side by side it looks better uh, so it's just a safe thing to do to actually add that it also adds to your render time obviously uh, but uh, in my opinion definitely worth it so there's one more thing that we need to cover before we end this tutorial which is the animation flow so let's go to the top left hand corner of the screen where it says compositing click that button and change it to default zoom back out and uh, let's pre press play on the timeline and see that's at the bottom center of the screen press play and see how the animation flows as you can see it's really slow then it starts to speed up uh, and then if we went all the way to the end, you'd realize that it would start to slow down again. Uh, so that's not cool. Uh, let's let's fix that. Let's go to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen where you see that little box. Change that to the graph editor. And you'll notice that there's a Bezier curve. Uh, we want that to be straight. So let's go to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, press key, press interpolation mode, and change it from Bezier to linear. And as you can see, it's a linear line there <laughs> and let's go to the bottom left hand corner of the screen go back to 3d view and press play again from the beginning and you'll realize that it starts out at a normal speed and it continues to do so throughout the whole animation so yet again I hope this uh, covers everything uh, that you're curious about if you have any questions comments or concerns please put it on my YouTube page uh, if, you, uh, if you want to follow me on Google Plus there I am otherwise Hopefully I'll have some uh, new tutorials coming up uh, next weekend, maybe even this weekend if I have time. I've got some other ideas I need to work on. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.